Hi friends, welcome back to a yet another video. In this particular video, I would like to talk about continuous scrolling transformation diagrams. So to start off with, first I would like to address the question that what is the relevance of continuous scrolling transformation diagram? In the last lectures, we have already established isothermal transformation diagrams. So you may be asking what is the purpose of bringing in another set of diagrams? So let me answer that question first. So here I, you can see a typical isothermal transformation diagram. You have got time in your x-axis, then temperature in your y-axis. This is 727 degrees Celsius. This particular line corresponds to this temperature. Above it, everything is stable. Austenite phase is stable. Now, as you bring it, suddenly cool it, you will get a martensite. If you suddenly cool it till here and then you hold it for a while, then you will get perlite. If you suddenly cool it till here and then you hold that hold your material at that particular temperature for a while, then you will end up with bayonet. So all these things we have desired, we have already discussed. Let's take two thought experiments. In the first thought experiment, I'm cooling my, this is the initials thing. So I'm cooling my alloy like this. Assume that for the sake of explanation, this particular portion is pretty rapid. For the time being, let's assume that I'm bringing it to this temperature, let's say around 400 degrees Celsius, and then I'm holding it at that particular temperature till this point. Okay, this is cooling curve one. Then I have an, another cooling curve where cooling is performed something like this so here i have curve one let me give the this is the curve one let me use a different color so that it will be visible mm, yes so this is the cooling curve one and i have a cooling curve two so in this case the cooling is continuous the temperature is varying continuously but in this case it is isothermal cooling now the first question i am asking you is that which of these curves is applicable to this particular diagram or i can rephrase the question in another way using this ttt diagrams for which of these cooling curves we can correctly predict the end product Pause the video for a while and then come back with an answer. So the right answer is using this particular TTT diagram, you can successfully predict the end product for a cooling like curve one or for the diagram or the for the particular cooling corresponding to the curve one, we can predict the end product very clearly and very successfully. But for a typical cooling curve like that of curve 2 as shown here where the temperature is continuously changing with respect to temperature sorry with respect to time we won't be able to predict the end product or the end microstructure successfully because these curves are not drawn for continuous cooling so that sums up or that kind of concludes that or it shows the relevance of or the particular there is a need for continuous cooling diagrams or there are need for curves which will tell you which will help you to successfully predict the end microstructure for continuous cooling because in most of the cases in real life continuous cooling is fairly easy to achieve compared to that of isothermal cooling because it is very difficult you have to suddenly bring it to this temperature and then you have to hold it at that particular temperature so it is fairly difficult compared to continuous cooling so that's why we require continuous cooling diagrams so let's go and have a look at what are continuous cooling diagrams here i have shown you a simple continuous cooling diagram a few things you can observe here is that see Similar to an isothermal transformation diagram, we have time in the logarithmic scale along the x-axis and we have temperature in degree centigrade along the y-axis. 
these dotted lines represent the isothermal transformation diagram and these dark lines represent the continuous cooling transformation diagram you can see in continuous cooling the time required for the reaction to begin is delayed Sli that's why this particular dark curve is slightly offset from this curve so this point this particular line correspond to the locus of the points at which the transformation the transformation of austenite to perlite will take place and this particular curve represents the time required for the reaction to end or the uh, other words we can say at this particular point the transformation is completed here as also we can see the time taken for the reaction to end is also delayed that's why this particular curve is of slightly offset from this this curve is offset from this particular curve okay so good one important thing um let me show you in another curve a few more things so in this particular curve we can observe a few more things few more inferences from this curve you can see here i have super, uh, superimposed two cooling curves into this particular diagram one is a um, slow cooling curve that's why it is kind of flattened out like this and this is moderately rapid cooling line now using this particular continuous cooling transformation diagram i can successfully predict what will be the resulting microstructures after these two cooling processes let's say i am cooling like this then at this particular point the transformation will begin and at this particular point the whole austenite will be transformed into perlite and we will end up with a fine perlite structure similarly if we are cooling very slowly then we will end up with a coarse perlite structure why what is the reason behind this i have already explained you when slow cooling there is sufficient amount of time for the diffusion to happen then we will end up with the coarse perlite so i have explained you the mechanism behind perlite formation in my earlier lectures so if you have any doubt go and watch my earlier videos one important thing normally bainite won't be formed when plain carbon steel is continuously cooled to room temperature this is because all the austenites will have transformed into perlite by the time bainite transformation has become possible remember bainite transformation is only possible from 215 degree centigrade that is 215 degree centigrade to 540 degree centigrade so that range corresponds to somewhere here now before this temperature all of the austenite will be transformed to perlite so in a continuous cooling diagram we won't be getting bainite at all so make sense if you can you can ask me another question let's say i am cooling like this let's say i am cooling like this then what will happen you can guess you can pause my video and then come back the answer is the a certain portion of austenite will be transformed to perlite till it reaches this point certain po portion of the austenite will be transformed to perlite the remaining austenite begins to transforming into martensite upon crossing this martensite line so here you will have perlite and you will have unreacted austenite when it reaches this point this unreacted austenite will transform into martensite and perlite will be there so in this region you will have a perlite plus martensite now i can pose you another question let's say i am cooling it very rapidly like this then what happens the answer is pretty straight forward then you will end up with a martensite microstructure 
the very important point is that lines which represent martensitic transformation the lines this line the start line the 50 percentage line and this 90 percentage line occur at identical temperatures for both these diagrams for both isothermal transformation diagram as well as for continuous cooling transformation why is there is why is it so because martensite transformation is a time independent process it doesn't depend upon time that's the reason why these temperatures are the same in both kind of transformation diagram the other key concept is that there is a thing called critical cooling rate so critical cooling rate means i have a figure for you here see this is the critical cooling right for continuous cooling of a steel alloy this particular diagram is only valid for a steel alloy of eutectoid composition so for continuous cooling of steel alloy there exists a critical quenching rate, rate or a critical cooling rate which represents the minimum rate of cooling that will produce a completely martensite structure so i explained to you earlier that depending upon the cooling rate you can end up with the perlite microstructure after your continuous cooling you may end up with a martensite plus perlite microstructure if your cooling rate is somewhere in between these two values let's say if i am cooling at 100 degrees celsius per centi 100 degrees celsius per second then i may end up with here that means my end microstructure will be perlite plus martensite but when I am cooling at this rate, at the rate of 140 degrees Celsius per second, then I will end up in martensite microstructure. So this is the critical cooling rate. So let me ask you a question. What is beneficial if you want to have martensite in your end microstructure or in your resulting microstructure? Martensite will give you a lot of strength to the material. So if you need martensite, in your end microstructure or in your resulting microstructure then you should have very uh, reasonable values for critical cooling rate i can't have a value like 300 degrees celsius um, per second and all because this is very hard to achieve so that's why that's why alloying steels to facilitate the formation of martensite in alloy steels in or one of the reasons for facilitating this or the formation of martensite steels are alloyed carbon and other alloying alloying metals will shift this particular nose this particular nose and it, they will in turn reduce the critical cooling rate so that it is physically it is more easy to or it is more practical to achieve that particular cooling rate and one more thing i and carbon alloys containing less than 0.258 percentage of carbon are not formally heat treated to form martensite because quenching rate is too rapid to be practical so that's why you add more carbon then the chances of your ccr critical cooling rate assuming smaller and smaller values is more that's it thanks for watching